streaming from Accra. Guide Radio. The new wave. wave. Hello everyone, this is The Guide Radio. My name is Lady Pulos and you're listening to one of the podcast sessions. Today we have two lovely guests with me who were speaking German uh, um, earlier and um, it's kind of a bit, just, it's not annoying or anything. I just, I mean, I know one or two words, so it's okay. I kind of like creeping in your conversation. <laughs> I feel like GCSE German all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're joined by two lovely guests and I'm going to let you, um, let them introduce themselves. So we have Irene. Yeah, hi, my name is Irina Samo. I'm 23 years old. I live in Germany. I was born and raised there, but my parents are Ghanaian, so we travel to Ghana a lot, pretty much every year. And I am a German influencer. <laughs> um, the reason why I started doing videos and even putting myself out there like that is because, well, black people in Germany are not really the majority, so, you know, we just needed, we just needed a few more people to show the younger people that we do exist yeah and um and and chris i am chris Yabo. i'm also 23 years old born and raised in germany my parents are both Ghanaian, and i am a youtuber as well i started my youtube channel out of the same reasons why irene started hers and it's been great ever since okie dokie you guys how is it how is it like being in ghana right now <laughs> well pretty overwhelming first of all because of the heat the heat. It's winter time over there, so just like. But I'm pretty glad to be here. I don't really like the snow and the cold. You don't? No. Oh, no. no. It's and good for like three days, and then I'm good. Oh, whereabouts <laughs> in Germany are you living? Um, I live in Hamburg, which is pretty much in the north. Yeah. Okay, and then and Chris? I'm from München, and I love Ghana. I want to come here every year. This time has been very hectic and yeah. stressful for the both of us because we have been trying to, you know, do a couple of work here and there. But other than that, I love Ghana and I would come back anytime. I love yeah. Ghana. I mean, would you guys ever consider living here? Yes, yes definitely. definitely. So definitely. what is it like, um, I guess, uh, living out um, and, um, you know, kind of showing uh, the German public what it's like as um, a Ghanaian or as, you know, what is it like as an influencer in Germany? What is what has your experience been like? Well, first of all, I believe that just because people look up to the other per people look up to people that could you know identify with so obviously because we're not that many compared to the german people it, you know it's not you you get the feeling that other people are doing the same work but you know get not even recognized but just they reach um more people a larger audience but seeing that actual like black people not even Ghanaian people in germany but mm -hmm. black people in general because they have the same skin color the same problems going growing up and the same hair you know yeah. for girls yeah so it's just like it's great to see that you don't actually just influence the Ghanaian community but it's also girls from let's just say togo or congo mm -hmm. or different parts of africa which is great mm -hmm. so yeah and 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 um chris what would you say about that yourself, your experience um, as a, an influencer. And can you relate to Irene in any way? I can in a way, but then again, I realized that with my channel, for example, so many people are just like, oh, I, am, I totally understand how you feel. And finally someone is speaking about these issues because I mean, Irene is like the queen of black German YouTube. She was, she's so like, <laughs> she's <laughs> one of the first people to start this thing and she influenced so many people to start their channel as well. So I always tell her that she was one of my inspirations. Aww, but then again, what? That's so sweet. I'm <laughs> blushing. <laughs> but you know, Irene and my content are similar but different because she's a, she's a woman and she does like beauty and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And I focus more on, I don't know, like, more on race and more on like growing up african in germany okay. so that wasn't really there before and now people are like oh this is so cool thank you for speaking out now yeah. i feel proud to be black and i don't have to be ashamed and blah 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 because we speak about the truth and it's so funny because growing up like we get spankings for example yeah. and when you yeah. go to school you can't talk to your white friends about oh my mom woke my behind yeah. yesterday you blah, would blah, blah. get in a lot of trouble yeah. Imagine. Yeah, yeah. but now i speak about that in my videos and so many people are like oh my god i couldn't tell anyone and now i can finally really? you know to see people who went through the same thing so it's 
quite amazing and overwhelming. Yeah. 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 And um, I guess in that sense, what would be one of the big, the biggest issues that um, affect, uh, you know, well, as a Ghanaian living mm. in Germany, what are the mm. one of the, the biggest uh, challenges that you face generally? What are the things that um, are quite difficult for you to, I mean, I guess are, have handled or, or are still handling um, there? Yeah. Well, with me, it was um, insecurities because I remember... Um, I used to wear my natural hair out every day when I was uh, a girl, but my mom just braided them somehow. And then there was this time I went to Ghana and I got my hair really nicely braided with cornrows in the back, uh, in the front, and then with beads. I thought it looked really good. Aww. Like, it looked cute. And I got to school and then everybody was looking at me funny. And I was so embarrassed and ashamed Aww. to have my hair yeah. and look the way I look that I can even remember the how I felt right now, you know? So uh. I would say insecurity because they, or certain things made me feel like I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. Certain things made me feel like I wasn't good enough or that I don't want to look the way I look right now, you know? So, and I know that other people battle with the same thing or younger children battle with the same thing. So yeah, my environment made me pretty insecure at one point. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> no. So it's just that I remember how I felt in that particular situation when I came home and I told my mom, I don't want these. And you know, you're, you know, moms, you're yeah. not going to do this. They spend five hours on your hair. Why do you want to take them off? You know? Yeah. So, and um, then like a few years later, not even a few years later, months later, I started relaxing my hair, but I was about 12 years. I had really long hair, started relaxing them and just, you know, mm -hmm. because I felt like my hair wasn't pretty enough. Yeah. I wanted to have straight hair. I yeah. wanted to look a bit more like them, which I now understand is wrong because now I have mm -hmm. my natural curls back on, which okay. I'm proud of. But I feel like insecurity is one of the hugest problems when it comes to um, our community in, yeah. in Germany. Yeah. Oh, I don't need to cry. No, I'm not. Oh, no, fuck with this. Come on, you can, you're, you're okay. You can, no. you, you got it. Oh, no, 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 I want to see that. <laughs> Dude. Don't waste the thing to beauty. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no, we got you gotta no. wipe your tears. You gotta you gotta yeah, move yeah. forward. No, it was just that I remembered the the way I felt back then. So it's just speaking about it, I'm not a crybaby, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shouldn't no, but um I guess I can relate to that in some way. Mm. Um, especially for me. Uh, growing up, I remember one time my mom put my hair in little plaits yeah. or in like single braid plaits and um, I went out and someone said that I looked like um, Medusa. Oh my oh, god, wow. that's, that's actually that's mean. That's, it's, that's it's mean. It's rude. And, and you, you know what, it, it makes you, or, or no, Medusa or spider legs, those were the two. Yeah. Wow. So you look like an animal or a witch. Right. That's, wow. Okay. It's, that is, I don't know how people think of such things. How can you tell a child that she looked like Medusa with those braids? And the, and if, I mean, the funny thing is, is that you know, as a it's a child telling another child yeah. something that they have obviously seen from someone else or have learned from somewhere else. It's it's something that is already um, ingrained in yeah. them. So it's it's sad to think that someone, obviously like an adult, would have had to influence them in some way for them yeah. to think that way. I mean, it's a child. Where is she getting that from? Yeah, that's horrible. Okay, you know what? Let's let a moment to recollect, you guys. We're gonna come back with you right. Um, we're gonna come back right back soon, and uh, we hope you guys are staying with us. Uh, we'll be right back. This is the Guide Radio. Don't forget, you can uh, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, the Guide Radio, the New Wave. Uh, we'll be right back soon. So stay tuned. Streaming from Accra. Guide Radio, the New Wave. Wave. Alrighty, guys, we are back. Um, we're, we're just right back. We're, we put ourselves together. We're feeling good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we're okay. Um, but this subject, if you guys don't know, we're talking about, um, you know, Germans, I mean, Ghani people living in, in Germany and, and the experience of it. You're still listening to the guide radio and I'm Lady Palos. Um, so right back to the conversation. Um, the idea about being feeling insecure and even though your hair is a symbol, I guess, of, you know, who you are and where you're from yeah. in, 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 in Germany, it was seen as something that was uh, to be ashamed of. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. because you were different. But back then, I don't think that I understood that it's actually good to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, 
you have to make your own experiences, get to know yourself better, and then you understand why certain things are happening. Yeah. But yeah. then again, are we different though? That's the that's the issue because they see themselves as like the the main thing the standard and everything else is different mm. and even if you even if, when you work with someone like i was working at ikea and everyone can work they don't need a degree to work there mm. i was just working there over the summer sure. and the people who didn't even finish school were talking down to me because i'm black like i have my degree i'm just doing this to buy you know to move into my apartment and stuff but then again they feel like they are in wait how do you say it? they feel like they're inferior to is that the right word is it some no. sort of inferiority? We are inferior. We are, we inferior. are inferior to You're them. Inferior. Exactly. They they mm-hmm. feel like, oh, black people are like below Beneath. us. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone, but then again, I, I made a video about the racist questions that we get asked. And how can you ask a black uh, a black person, is your blood red as well? Do you have red blood? Like, what does it mean? Someone said that to you. Yeah, I've it's had the not, question as yeah, well. Yeah, we've all had the question. And that, that, that video was what kind of like, blew up my channel because so many black people watching they were like wow i thought i was the only one but like this is really a thing that's horrible so i think that's the main issue because if if they would see us all as equals we wouldn't have insecurities yeah you know if you didn't point out that someone has bigger lips they wouldn't feel a type of way about their lips because when i was in school i never thought that i have big lips i don't even have that you know my lips aren't that big and like compared to mm. other people but that, when i was in school they were like oh your lips are so big you look like a monkey and then no. ever since that day i was like wow i want to have smaller lips i want to have smaller lips and now i just i just embrace it <laughs> yeah um, you should now let me come in on this one um i found it actually quite interesting what you said but if you think about it in this way technically we all in the diaspora live in their country and we abide to their rules and so on mm. so Racism is only there because of fear. You're scared of something that you don't know, right? So when they're addressing all of these things, it's because they don't have it or they didn't know of it. That's why they're like, oh, why do you have big lips when you're dark and da 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 Because they don't know it. They didn't see it before. And it also goes w- way back to the times when uh, slavery was there as well, that all our mentality was changed and we always see white people as, let's say, the, mm-hmm. um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Lady, help me out. Um, superiors. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And so we always have this mentality of, oh, you know, they are better. I want to look more like them. Mm. For instance, that's the whole reason why weaves came into the game. We wanted to have white people like hair. Do you yeah. get it? Yeah. Lighter skin. Like I want lighter to, skin, yeah. carolite and all of these things. Yeah. Because we want to be like them because that's what how we were influenced to be like them. Mm. So they only like that because obviously they're scared of our skin colour. They don't know this and this and this and this and this. So that's where racism comes in. But therefore, you know, you have other things that uh, also affect yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, off that off that off the bat of that one, I wonder if you guys ever felt the need to conform in any way if you felt under pressure to feel especially like with your hair did you ever feel like mm, let me try straightening my hair or let me try doing this or doing that or with you i don't know what do you know what i'm saying do you ever feel like you needed to try and fit in as possible as much as possible yeah basically with the hair what i said with um straightening straightening my hair because my mom always wanted to keep it natural um but at one point i was just like no i can't i just need to look a certain way but it didn't go as far as, let's just say, skin bleaching or trying to, like, fix something on my body or my lips or something. Never, never that. Just the hair. And then at one point, I just got tired of it. And I was just like, mm-mm. Let me just embrace it. And yeah, that's it. Chris, that's I wa- me. Yeah. I, I, Chris, I wonder if you ever, if you heard about the, um, uh, I think it was Cardi B. Uh, not Cardi B. It was, um, oh, no. Help me. <laughs> She, Rob Kardashian's ex. Black China. China. Right. Mm-hmm. She started or she joined. Um, oh. Did you hear about that? Yes. The skin, skin bleaching. I personally, I heard about all the backlash and I don't understand why people are attacking her because the main issue is why are so many people in Nigeria bleaching in the first place? Right. She was just going there because that's where the market is. So if people wouldn't bleach their skin, that she wouldn't have been there. She wouldn't have done it. And I feel like people just want to 
people always want to be negative without even thinking about the deeper issue. The deeper issue is not that she is trying to make money. The, the deeper issue is that most Nigerian women bleach their skin mm -hmm. because they, if they didn't buy it, she wouldn't have been in the country. If Bobriski didn't promote his skin bleaching cream, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they always want to attack Black Chen. She's this, she's that. But I feel like what she is doing is her business. We should focus on our people yeah. and why they're bleaching their skin and why they hate their skin. Because you, how can you tell someone, wow, you're too dark? What is yeah. that? You know, it's interesting. I think it, it's, it just, it's not just beauty, but it's also the idea of a better way of life. I think mm. in Africa as well, a lot of people um, feel, and even the younger people, I say, that's why you have so many, we have so many uh, migrants. Mm -hmm. And it's that sense that people feel as though outside, where, regardless of where they are, outside is better. In the Western mm. world is better. Like, I find myself sometimes talking to people and you ask them, they'll say to you, oh, you know, I want to move somewhere. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Where would you want to go? Anywhere it's there. Canada, yeah. UK, US. And I'm like, okay, why those places? Oh, but it's better. Mm. Everything's better. Like, you have not been there. Yeah. Trust me. US especially. Yeah. And it's that same sense of this um, feeling of... Uh, wanting to look like um people that are from the west and in, in terms of the skin bleaching as well um it's sad to know that people feel that once you have lighter skin it means that therefore you'll have a better life mm. or good things will come to you um and i think i wonder if that's the mentality in that sense that people bleaching their skin thinks that not only if it's prettier mm -hmm. but that they'll get more opportunities mm -hmm. as a result mm -hmm. of it what do you think well um the opportunity thing that might be in the u.s i don't know i've never lived there but you know you do hear some kind of racism going on in particular business or industry industries so i can't speak about that but in germany i do not feel like when you bleach your skin you're looked at differently like mm -hmm. in, a, in a good way because to them it's just so white black. black yeah white and black it does not matter if you're your skin color because you're fair in color you're still black Right. You, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. It doesn't matter if you're my color or my complexion or you. So if I bleach my skin, they would literally have no benefits for me in my opportunities coming to me. Right. That's it's just, yeah, it's just what I, how I would feel about myself if I would have bleached my skin. Right. Yeah. That's what I was saying that we need to look at our community because I feel like colorism is a great, pro like a very big problem in our community because it's, amongst blacks it's not a white person saying you're too black it's a black person telling another person you're too black and that's the issue we have yeah that's well in it. germany at least at, in so. germany at least yeah so, no Chris, I... I would like to ask um <laughs> he's always what? coming for me yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's he's targeting you <laughs> no, no, no 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 okay so then, let's say it's a, it's a more broad question like um why okay how do i place this do you think or would you advise another Ghanaian that lives here and has worked here all his life or her life to move to Germany? If yes, why? And if no, why? Good yes, question. I would. But not in the sense of where you move and you never come back. I, mm. I feel like there are more chances in Germany to make money because I, I'm here and the way, I, the, the way the average person lives in Germany is different than the way the average Ghanaian lives here. Okay, right. So we're in Ghana now. So mm -hmm. I would like you to explain uh, that exactly the statement that you just made. The the average person in Germany is this and this and this and this. I mean, alone the, the money the average person gets in Germany is way above what the average payment is here. And everything here is so expensive when you compare the money that you get monthly, mm -hmm. like the, the um, what, what's it called? The rent. The rent is very, very high. Yeah. How are you supposed to live if you don't have like side hustles or you don't come from a good home? It's very hard. You struggle even though you, you make okay money. You have an, I don't know, corporate job or whatever. You're still struggling in life. And it's not, that's not how it is in are Germany. Are you talking about Germany now or are you talking no, about No, I'm Ghana? talking about Ghana. Okay. Yeah. So I would... I, w I wouldn't say that you should move out of Ghana, like, no, leave Ghana. But I would say that if you really want to, like, make money and you're struggling right now, and if you have the chance to move, you should. Um, but don't abandon your country. Like, go do what you want to do and then set up a business in Ghana, come back and, you know, fulfill your dreams. Hmm. I would disagree with you. 
Because mm -hmm. I reckon in Germany, if you're applying for a job or you're applying for, um, you know, something that way to survive on, I reckon there, if you have like a job interview of 10 people and you were the only, or there were like four black people and the rest were white, they wouldn't pick a single black person. They would pick all the w other. They would. It's not exactly. that. It's it's not that bad anymore. It's really not that bad. All they want to see is that you have your degree and you're doing well and. Yeah, but it's still preferred as as oh, I'd rather have a white person than a, a black person. I wouldn't well, quite agree on that. Well, I I believe. Well, I've applied for jobs, obviously, and mm -hmm. um. I got picked every single yeah. time. So you so, did. Yeah. I did. So it's, yeah. yeah. So it's it's not really not anymore. I don't know about the times. Yeah. You know when our parents came. Yeah. Sure. That's different. Because they didn't have the degrees. Exactly. And they they don't know. have the knowledge. They don't mm. really speak the language good enough for them to even have a good job. So I okay. do. You know. And the thing is, we always say, oh, we don't see black doctors. We don't see black police officers in Germany. That's because no one is you know, going to college yeah. to become a doctor. No, no one is yeah, you know, but for instance, I've, I had a mate, uh, he's, he studied here to become a doctor, yeah. went to Germany and they didn't accept it. Yeah, but that's, that's because, that's that's because yeah. they teach different things. No, we are the, well, Chris and I, our mm. age groups are the first generation born there. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we definitely know the language. Yeah. We've definitely been to school here. We know how to apply for certain things and we kind of, Obviously, we do want to come back, but we ha we live our dreams there. Mm -hmm. right. You know, where we, in Germany? Yeah, in Germany. Like okay. we try to get a good job there before we even think about coming mm -hmm. back. Because if you have nothing to stand on, why would you go back to a country that you would not, you don't have a job? You know? Yeah. So, because you know that you're coming back to struggle. Exactly. So we try to do something there. Mm -hmm. So I kind of agree with you, and I kind of agree with Chris on what he said mm -hmm. because. Um, you were saying that you would not advise somebody to go there. My yeah. brother, he's a lawyer. He he lives pretty good. I would never advise him to come yeah. to Germany because, first of all, he does not speak the language. Mm -hmm. His Whatever certificate he had to get until he uh, got to the point where he is, mm -hmm. he's not. it's, got, it's not going to be valid in Germany. Yeah. So I would never right. tell him, come to Germany for mm -hmm. vacation, maybe. Yeah. But if a person um, is young, able to learn the language, able to like make a good living, or to, you know, develop him or herself in Germany, I would say, okay, come. But if you're a bit older and you don't really have the and time to learn really, certain yeah. things, you would probably end up doing cleaning work. So I would say, no, stay in Ghana, try to build something here because it's not worth it. Yeah. You're just basically going to clean up somebody else's house and try to make a living there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would advise them not to come. But if you're young, you have the ways and means to do certain things. Maybe I know a person who came to Germany and he learned German here already. So obviously you know the language. Yeah. You can you it's can really even fast. though it's not gonna be a good job in the beginning, you're not gonna be cleaning. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're not on the bottom. So those are the you know, it depends. I would say it depends because if you already live good here and you have your family here and you, you have a job, why go to another country? Yeah, and I wonder as well if um, as you said, all the young, the young people who are able and capable of learning the language and um, to some extent have that time to be able to try and develop yeah. themselves in a different country. I wonder if they would ever come back. Because if you have more and more young people thinking, like I said earlier, that the best way forward is to go to um, another a foreign country yeah. in order to establish themselves, I wonder how many would actually return. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing well in some other country, mm. what is the point of returning back home? So I wonder what is sparing a lot of Ghanaian people from right, coming back. From coming back. I definitely know that I'm going to come back because it's just the atmosphere here. I feel at home. I feel peace of mind when I'm here. I feel like this is where I belong. And I, I love my culture. I love, you know, seeing people who look like me, seeing people mm. who speak my language, seeing people who are brought up the way I was brought up. So it's always been home. Even though I was born and raised in Germany, Ghana has always been home mm. to me. I've never, like, lived here longer than, like, a month or two. But I still consider it more home than, you know, where I was born and raised. And to me personally, I want to help the country because there's so many things that I see... You know, people my age who are less fortunate, who are selling stuff by the roadside. Yeah. People who die of cancer because they can't afford treatment and stuff. And I want to, I really want to do stuff to help people like 
fix the roads and there's so many things to be done and those are the things that motivate me to come back home because in Germany what, what, who are we supposed to help even the homeless people have shelters <laughs> no, right but that's, that's impressive though. even the that's, homeless people have shelters that's like, impressive I mean that's they can shower they can eat eat they even get to watch TV I'm just saying really yeah and you so when I see a homeless person like begging for money in Germany like get out of here <laughs> you know go and see a homeless person in Ghana how they yeah. struggle yeah we have wow. like homeless shelters and like in the winter time there's like um there are trucks, buses trucks and trucks food. yeah they, with food, they hand up food and like sli- beds and yeah. stuff and That's heaters remarkable. for them yeah. yeah i mean being homeless is still bad don't it's, get us yeah, wrong yeah. we're not saying <laughs> yeah all but homeless the, you know but no. it's but i mean it's always different. you you can always see from a different perspective and looking at it that way homeless people in germany are not too bad off that's all i'm like yeah. people here have yeah. it way worse and that's what makes me want to come home and help yeah. like so many people are dying in accidents mm. which could be prevented if the roads were okay yeah, yeah. yeah those are all the things i want to get into i've never even thought about getting into politics but just like ebony's death this year yeah. made me realize that okay no this is enough we've lost Zoe williams we've lost kwame Uswansa, we've lost ebony due to bad roads Road. it's time to do something no one is doing anything yeah so those are all the things that you know but in order to change something you would have to be in, into politics and i never liked politics i <laughs> i don't know anything about politics but those are the things that motivate me to educate myself so that in the future i can come back home and help you know where i can help because yeah we're i don't want people yeah. lies and stuff yeah no sure i mean i wonder though if you need to really be in politics in order to make an impact at the end of the day, right now, what you're doing as an influencer, do you feel as though there might be some way in what you're doing already that you could um, kind of maneuver that into doing work here in Ghana? I think so. There might, I mean, I don't know. Um, well, this influencing thing is new to all of us because it's, it hasn't yeah. been there for a long time. Sure. You know? It's not a proper it's very, job. Yeah, Let's it's not a proper... It yeah, way. it's yeah. very new, so... We, we, Irene and I are still trying to figure things out. Oh, and, exactly. You know, it's new. I'll call Irene. I'm like, yo, I got this deal. Like, how am I supposed to go yeah. about it? Because I don't know. We are literally managing ourselves oh, yeah. and, you know, doing everything ourselves. So I don't really know how to go into that direction. Well, I know that, you know, I've been vlogging about Ghana and now, like, German kids in, Ger- uh, in Germany, Ghanaian German kids in Germany, sorry. Sure. They message me and ask me about, oh, where can I go in Ghana? Yeah, me too. That's now awesome. they, yeah, now they come to us and they want to know more about Ghana. Like, yeah. I even made a video about December Ghana before I came here because so many people have questions, and I'll just send you the link, and uh, you can watch the video. Definitely. So, I feel like that we can do things, but mm-hmm. h- how how powerful are we to you know get to the government? Um, you yeah, well, I definitely feel as though influence people that are able to create such content on youtube and um on different platforms and able to reach so many people and just as you said you be able to speak to people who are interested in knowing more about them that's the first step in itself the 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 ability to be able be able to touch people Mm -hmm. and to to motivate them and to change their mindsets and to encourage them and that in itself is already a big step because once you're out there the more that you do anyways in your own capacity no one, not a lot of people are doing it. Yeah. So that makes you guys unique in itself. Look yeah. at me bragging. Like, I'm happy, I'm gassing you guys up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank but like, you. in that sense, so then there's more, there's more possibilities then, therefore, yeah, to yeah. be I, I, I feel like definitely. we are definitely going to make yeah. a change because yeah. we, we, Irene and I see ourselves as regular people, people who exactly. do like work or go to school. Like, it's, it's nothing to us. But then again, Sometimes you have to see yourself through the eyes of others yeah. because they really look up to us. They are like, "Yo, can you speak on this topic? Can you do this? Can you, can you like bring attention to this?" So it is our job yeah. to kind of bring awareness to things like that. But then again, we can't be. Br- I don't want to make Ghana look bad because, like, if I put out content showing the roads and all of those things, the people in Germany who have you know stupid questions about Africa will be like, "Oh, so everything we see on TV is true." So right. I, I try to Which show, like, not. the beautiful sides of Accra, like, the gallery apartments, <laughs> the beach, and stuff like that. I don't want to show them what they already see on TV, like, the kids with, with, the, with you know, the bellies. Yeah. And yeah, I don't want to show them that yeah. because that's all they know. They it don't is. even... They, 
people ask me, do you live in huts in Africa? Oh, yeah. goodness, this question. They need to stop that. They still ask in 2018, <laughs> I'm telling it's you. It's mad. But I guess it's a sort of a catch-22 situation in that sense. You want to show the good parts and encourage other people, but at the end of the day, we got to be helping our people yeah. first. And it's unfortunate, but it's almost like you want to show but you don't want to show too yeah. much. Yeah, exactly. And just y- because they have this perception about Africa. And it's not even Ghana. It's not Ghana. It's, it's just yeah. Africa in general. Af- exactly. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely, it's, it's tricky. Very tr- yeah. It's very it's tricky. tricky. It's definitely tricky. Um, actually, you know what? I want to go back because I'm, I'm really interested. In, I want people to know more about the content that you guys are actually Put out. Um, putting out there. Um, Chris, can you tell us the... Sp- how would you um, describe your content that you're specifically creating? I don't creating? even know. Like... I feel like I'm going in a direction I didn't no. even want to go into with my channel. Because really? I Yeah, I, I do YouTube videos and podcasts. Okay. And when I started YouTube, it was like more of fun things, yeah. you know, for like black young kids in Germany to, you know, have like see challenges and like grown up African tags and, you know, videos with my parents and stuff. But then people are like, oh, we want to see you talk about serious stuff, blah, 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 blah. So I created a podcast where I talk about like, Stuff like um, support in the black community in sure. Germany. Um, um, what was it? Um, Violence, abuse. abuse. Um, um, yeah, abuse and homosexuality in the black community. All of those things because people are like, okay, we see you're entertaining people, but like, what can they learn from it? So I have two things. So now you can't say that I'm not doing the right thing because if you don't like this side, you're definitely going to like this side. <laughs> so, you know, so pick and choose. If you don't like either of it, then you just don't like me as a person. Right. But I'm doing what you want me to do. So... Um, but now my YouTube is kind of going in a more serious direction because I've been doing a lot of videos on race and like we yeah. have racist politicians who mm. like use the N word and stuff in German on TV, in German, on TV. Oh, boy. and I kind of I'm trying to bring attention to all those things because my generation we don't vote like mm. I'm 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 part of them I have never voted before until like I, I saw the yeah. the video I was like nah. We can't yeah. be letting people like that run the country. We have a voice yeah. and it's time to use it because I don't think that black people in our age group actually go and vote or no, actually... No, but I think they're not educated. In, no, yeah. no, they're not educated enough on that topic Yeah. because if you were actually to watch all the campaigns, read what the party is about and, you know, I think to prevent another thing, you would actually go and vote. But, but most of the... Sorry, yeah. most of the people Sorry. are like, oh, I don't even <laughs> care because they all do the same. Yeah. Which is not the case. Yeah. So it's just like we have to use our voice because I'm not even educated in, in politics. I, but I then again, really... they, they teach us in school. It's just us. We are not interested. Let's I be honest. I did not they learn didn't teach what you? SB... Maybe they, in they, the they... South, but in Hamburg. Yeah, they taught us. We had, <laughs> no, it, we had it in school. We had yeah. it in school, but I was never interested. I didn't care because... There's no war in Germany. Like, yeah. there's, we don't have Donald Trump as our president. So I never <laughs> really cared. I never cared. I was right. like, okay, everything's cool. Angela Merkel is doing her thing. You go, girl. Everything's, everything's Gucci. Everything's cool. Everything's good. Yeah, no I'm good. No I'm alive. I'm healthy. Yeah. So, but then, thanks to social media, we can see what is really going on in the world. Yeah. And that video came as a shock to yeah. many people of color. And it was just crazy. Like, how can such a person be a politician? So I'm just trying to bring awareness to things like that and then black fishing some girl was like oh i don't understand black fishing why is it a problem if i want to be darker um let me be dark but it's, and i try to explain certain things to you know people who don't understand why they should yeah. use the n-word why black fishing why certain people feel a type of way about black fishing all of those things yeah it's a it's a it's a broad you got a lot of things going on yeah i, on I yeah i think we're gonna have to definitely put up um that particular video that you're talking about so people yeah. know what you're talking about the politician yeah. and um also the other links i mean besides that i'm sure because i've seen your instagram okay <laughs> <laughs> and it's not serious stuff but I, I don't think it'll it's all serious stuff i'm, I'm seeing some interesting um outfit choices oh soon, yeah thank you. i definitely actually i've been staring at your shirt I don't know if oh, you noticed. This is, this is my merch. I released it before I came, like the week before I came yeah. to Ghana. This is my personal merch. Okay. Yeah. I'm about to drop my collect, like my proper collection next year. This is just like to see how people receive it. Yeah. yeah this is my own. And you designed it yourself? This is my, how do you call it? My logo. Logo? Your logo. Let me yeah. See and that. then this is my. Okay. Name, okay. Name okay. And, and all the other, um, the merch that's coming up. Did it's you... coming out soon. At, like, 
Yeah, I've just announced it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. But it's, it's going to come next year, hopefully. Uh, we're just trying to see if people will actually buy mm -hmm. the thing. So that's why we put the T-shirts out. And it's going well so far. So let's let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Irene, do you have anything coming up soon as well? Well, I would not like to speak on that, but... Uh, <laughs> fair enough. <Yeah. laughs> Anticipation. Yeah, but um, I'm assuming... I'm answering the same question. Oh, as, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. I, in fact, yeah, go ahead. You should be hosting. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I started YouTube, as I said, because, you know, there were not a lot of black girls. For me personally, obviously, I look up to a girl, a woman. So um, it was just difficult because we have different hair, different skin colors. We do our makeup differently. It's just all the things that girls go through that sure. a normal German girl can find on the Internet. Or even in a drugstore or, you know, in the supermarket, I wasn't able to find it. You have to go to the to the Afro shop to, or order it online from America, right? Yeah. So I started watching American YouTubers just to see how they handle their hair, what they use. And then I, I was just at one point fed up and I started, you know, doing my own videos. And I got great feedback, which I was proud of. So I kept going. And at one point when I felt so comfortable to, like, where my hair, well, I'll, you won't believe this, but um, I, t I said in a video that people or black girls should be proud of their hair, that should they should um, wear it open. And I got so many messages that they are all afraid to wear their afro out because they think it looks ugly, it looks strange, and it's not normal. So wow. I made a video about it, yeah. And um, I was, my hair was way shorter than now, but I was wearing my hair and then um, people started texting me um, I wore my hair out today for the first time. Oh, and, okay, wow. a few people looked at me strange, but it's okay. Like, I, I felt so happy reading that because, you know, even though it's just hair, you know, but it's a big part of yourself, especially for a, a girl, you know. Yeah. So um, I cannot wear my hair unless I'm, I straighten it, right? But my hair is puffy. That's just how it is. It makes me, I don't know, two inches taller. But <laughs> that's just what it is, you know. So, um yeah, my, my channel is basically about beauty, a bit more, a bit, yeah, well, beauty, talking about stuff that the majority want to see. Sometimes I even Girl talk talks. about, exactly, I talk <laughs> about boys, you know, sometimes they send me situations like, oh, this guy did this and that, can you please help me? So um, I talk about certain things and patterns. Okay. Uh, that some people do, you know. I, I call it girl talk, or um, another section is like C talk, which is community talk. Okay. Where we, where I basically open the message, read it out, obviously anonymously. Okay, sure. Um, I read the situation out. I let the community actually comment what the girl should do. At the end of the video, I also say, oh, I would do this and that, okay. you know. But I think that people actually like it because it's those are like topics that everybody goes through. Yeah. I have been crushing on guys as well. So I know yeah. that another girl definitely... Personal experience, yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So I know those are things that every girl goes through mm -hmm. or every person goes through, you know. So that's what my channel is basically about. A little bit of beauty, fashion, and then try to advise. Yeah. If, I don't even... Is it, is it all in German? Is it in German? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have subtitles? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's, that wor the that's, a hard, that's hard word. That is hard girl. thing. And Sometimes. we both, and Chris and I both um, thought about doing English videos. But the thing is that I, I had called Chris um, one time and I, I told him, I think I want to start doing English videos. And he told me the reason why we even started YouTube is to make an impact in Germany. Yeah. With German, um, with Speakers. German, exactly, yeah. with the German language in, in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. So changing it up to English, you become one in a million. Sure. And okay. in Germany, it's like, Germany is big, though. And but the influence... There's a lack exa in that Exactly. I don't think that there's a lack in the um, English-speaking community, mm -hmm. which is basically the whole world. But mm -hmm. there's a, a particular lack, lack in, in Germany, yeah. which is why... We, we are getting the views exactly. that we are getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why we think that what we're doing is going into a great right, direction yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. if we were to change it up into English half of the people would be like I don't even understand mm. and then we kind of lose what we are going for yeah no yeah I get you that's fine that's good yeah. just take out my German dictionary <laughs> and follow along to I it. mean my, my 
Oh, are you vlogged in English as well? Yeah, well, we we're vlogged like, in different vlogs. countries. Yeah. Are in, in a different exactly. Yeah, in okay, English. but like, the yeah. day-to-day videos like, are in German. Okay. Like I've put up, I think, two Ghana vlogs, and I was, I don't know where I was. Was it Afrochella? Or somewhere, and this girl came up to me. She was like, "Oh, you're a blogger, right?" I was like, "Yeah." She was like, "Oh, you're the reason why I'm in Ghana. Like, my friend is Ghanaian. That I'm from is America." Awesome. And I was like, "Okay, so this is serious." Like, to me, I'm, I just film my videos, and that's it. Like, mm-hmm. I put yeah. it out there, and that's. I see the numbers. Like, okay, thirty thousand views, forty thousand views, but I'm always in my corner, so I never get to meet the people. Sure. But this year was really the year where, I think, for me, I can only speak for me. I don't. Mm. Irina's always been like. The Beyonce, I've already said it. She's always been. <laughs> he's that really vibing he's you. Charming. No, because he no, is. because that's that's the truth. Like she's inspired so many people yeah. just to start YouTube, and she's made so many girls feel proud of who they are. And there's like issues within the black community that she has helped girls overcome. So I will give props where props is due. She's she Aww. has inspired so many people. So I'm never gonna be like, yeah, Irene is, you know, yeah, so what? Like, nah. We're in the same game, but I still have to give respect where respect is due. So yeah. I applaud Thank her for that. You. She's really doing a great job. Oh but- my gosh, stop it. <laughs> Just stop but it. It's impo- I wish, you know, I, I, I'm i creating content for, I'm creating the content that I wish I had while when growing up. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm putting out there. And she's doing the same thing like for my sisters. I would hate for my sisters to grow up the way I grew up. And yeah. thanks to her, they don't. He actually knew me because of his sister. Yeah, my sisters. My oh, sister you guys like... have such a cute little... <laughs> What's going on here? What is happening? No, we're actually best friends. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. That's... We're best friends. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually brilliant. Okay, you know what? Wait, we need to do the Instagram. We Instagram, Twitter, everything. <laughs> Come on. It... Irene. Yeah, so on Instagram, my ad is Irene Asamoa Official. And um, on YouTube, you can just type in Irene Asamoa. You'll find me. And Snapchat, Irina Samoa one, which is the number one, not okay. O N E, just one. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you clarify that way, <laughs> Chris. My Instagram handle is quite tricky. It's C H X V S, which is Chris, but I just put the X and the V in there. And my YouTube channel is Yeboaz Vlogs. Um, it's quite easy to find. Yeah, we'll, we'll post them up um, on our social media yeah, as well. Fine, so we, that's yeah, fine, that's fine. Uh, but actually, you know what? I have to ask you about Afrochella. I know we had a mini conversation about it earlier, but I do want to hear your thoughts. How did it go? What was the experience like? This is the second year, so I want to hear about it. Is it your was it your first time going by? No, way? that was my first time, but his second time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I forgot we were being filmed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um. I mean, Afrochella <laughs> is a very good thing because it brings so many people together, not just people from Ghana, but also people from outside of Ghana, like Nigerians came to Afrochella. Yeah. We had like Boris Kujo was at yeah. Afrochella and um, we've had so many people from so many different countries mm-hmm. and it's just celebrating African culture. Mm-hmm. So I applaud them for doing it. It's a very good cause. It's a very good thing. Yeah. The vibe is amazing. So it's, it's good. It's a very good thing. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Right, Irene. Well, this year was my first year because last year I was in Ghana, but I think I had she been, was part- I, I had been you partying the, the day before, so <laughs> I just, you know, I just stayed home. But this year was my first time, and it was interesting to see how it... I've never been to Coachella, so... Okay. Africana. No, Coachella. Coachella. So, oh, you're talking about Coachella. Yeah, oh, no, no, sorry. I've never been to Coachella. And I'm thinking that Coachella is it's just similar. the, oh, the African culture type of way of Coachella because I, I, I know that they have musical acts just yeah. like we did yesterday mm-hmm. at Co- at Afrochella. <laughs> so um, it was very interesting to see. Um, I liked how many people came and I liked the artists that performed. It was an interesting experience. Let me just put it that way because I've never been to Coachella or a musical festival like that. Sure. You know? So that was my first time in general. Were there any yeah. artists that you guys are really wanting to see? I think my highlight was, was Zumba. No, no, no. Like, I'm like my highlight in general was mm-hmm. Ebony last year. Oh, okay. I feel like nothing oh. could have topped that. I was the fan. biggest Ebony yeah. fan. Oh man! So I feel like that was my highlight. That's why, to me, nothing can top last, last year's yeah. okay. Afrochella because she's not here anymore. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like I was so blessed enough to, to be, be there, to there and to be able to experience the, like so close to her death like i mm. think that was like one of her last shows i think so yeah so 
that was that was amazing to me. Um, obviously, we had um, Daddy Lumba this year, which is amazing as well because like we grew up listening to exactly. Daddy Lumba, and it was so cool seeing all the you know people our age knowing the, the lyrics, lyrics and yeah. singing, all and sang along. And then um, I was I was excited to see. Um, Sister Derby, don't lie to me. Did she perform? Yeah, she did it. Yeah, the really? song. I really love that song. I was excited oh my... to see that. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay then. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, it's it's actually been really awesome speaking with you guys. <laughs> Thank you for having us. It's been amazing. Uh, wait. Yeah, Miss Easy and Benaboy, Miss You Bad. How's that? Mr. Easy and Benaboy. Did they perform yesterday? Um, Mr. I was at Dirty Rave before that, so I had already seen Mr. Easy. Um, performed before. I didn't see Bern. Was Bernard were there? I didn't is, see is him. Is he even in the country? Because no. I went to his concert la last night and he didn't show up, so... <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I don't think I saw him, to be honest. I don't think he's... I, he's not even in the country. I don't... Oh, he's... well, there we have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my... Okay, so, um, you guys, it's been... Actually, it's been really Thank awesome. Thank you so much. You You've uh, said a lot of things that I definitely need to also think about. And I'm now going to go and find my German dictionary <laughs> and try and figure out exactly... Google who, Translate. Yeah, Google Translate. <laughs> exactly. exactly. The entire time. Yeah, just, just, just record just and let it play. <laughs> okay, you guys, you will be able to find um, all the links that um, I spoke about earlier and they have mentioned um, on, our, um, on our social media via Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And yeah, you... Just keep following them. Whether you speak German or not, these or guys not, are awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to be doing a lot in, in Ghana soon. So be looking out for them. This has been The Guide Radio, um, one of my podcast sessions. And you've been listening to Lady Palos. We'll be seeing you. We'll be seeing you. Well, yeah. Wow. We'll be, you'll, be, you'll be hearing from us soon, okay? Take peace. Guide Radio. The new wave. Wave.